the Sapporo Snow Festival, a gigantic pop-up construction a kilometer and a half long. In just two and a half weeks, works of art up to 15 meters in height and made of nothing but snow will be constructed here. Behind each one is a dedicated team with just one goal, to create the most spectacular sculpture at the festival. Their biggest enemy, the weather. It's much too warm today. The snow is getting soft, so we'll have to work very carefully. An unfinished sculpture would be an unimaginable humiliation for the perfectionist Japanese. If we work day and night, we'll definitely be finished on time. The race against the time and temperature begins, a race with unexpected twists and turns along the way. Sapporo, Japan, a city with two million inhabitants. But once a year, an additional two million people flock here to the Sapporo Snow Festival, an event that generates millions in revenue for the city. The time available for setting up is limited. Throughout the city, preparations are in full swing. Nearly a hundred sculptures will be made from very small to very large. Sapporo is the capital of Hokkaido, the northernmost of the main Japanese islands. It's one of the 10 snowiest regions on the planet. Mid-January, 20 days remain until the festival. The Japanese military has been taking part since 1955. They're famous for their unusual sculptures. Hiroshi Nigara is in charge of one construction team, consisting of 150 soldiers. An impressive 15 meters high and 21 meters wide is their sculpture titled Upopoi. Upopoi means singing with the crowd and is a symbol of harmony in the culture of the Ainu, the indigenous people of Hokkaido. The sculpture consists of three parts, a traditional fishing boat, the Ainu Museum, and an enormous owl, the guardian deity of the Ainu. Chief constructor Hiroshi Nigara built snow sculptures as a young soldier. I've been doing this for 18 years, and this sculpture is the most complicated yet, primarily because of its shape. The sculpture has to be finished in 20 days, and the team is still busy with the preparations. They construct a mold using scaffolding and wooden boards that will then be filled with 5,000 tons of snow. The snow becomes compressed under its own weight and freezes to form a solid carvable block. The team will then sculpt this into the finished form. But they're nowhere near this stage yet. We're somewhat behind schedule and still have to add a lot of snow. So we're under some pressure. The team is a whole day behind schedule. The reason, delays to the deliveries of snow. They repeatedly encounter problems, like right now. The trucks full of snow promised for this afternoon are late. We now have to wait yet again. We need a total of 700 truckloads of snow. And we're still 250 short. A problem they traditionally have an experience before now. But climate change is making itself felt in Japan too. It's unusually warm for January, and it's hardly snowed thus far. The team is shipping in snow from the mountains, and they're about a three hour drive away. This takes a lot of time, time that hasn't been allowed for and time they don't have. Chief Constructor Hiroshi and his team from the Infantry Regiment 
are under a lot of pressure. A second unit of the Japanese military, the Northern Army Signal Group, is also working on a gigantic snow construction. Daisuke Kishinami is supervising construction of the second military sculpture. He too has been doing this for almost 20 years. To mark the centennial of Japanese-Polish diplomatic relations, he and his team are building a replica of the La Zienki Palace in Warsaw. 26 meters wide and 14 meters high. The Snow Palace must be as faithful to the original in Poland as possible in every detail. Project manager Daisuke has been planning the enormous pop-up construction for the past six months. The palace isn't just tall, but very wide too. And there's an entrance that the king passes through. Because the park isn't wide enough here, we have to adjust the dimensions somewhat, including the height. And it shouldn't look ridiculous in the end. Despite the enormous size of the palace, they need a third less snow than the infantry unit team. A distinct advantage given the current weather conditions and snow supply. The last trucks full of snow are just arriving. The soldiers now distribute it evenly across the upper level. By evening, preparations are almost complete. The final step, shaping the front face. This task is performed by the excavator operator. This is another very important step. It would be the facade of our palace. It's where the columns will be carved out of later on. If the snow isn't really firm and compact here, the entire facade will collapse when we sculpt it. That would be an absolute disaster. The excavator operator works the snow over to create an 8 meter high by 10 meter wide wall by eye. The wall will only be stable and will stand being worked on if it's perfectly vertical. We now have to let the snow settle for two days. This is very important. Temperatures during the day are higher, so the snow becomes soft. At night, colder temperatures cause it to freeze again. This process solidifies it and results in the stable structure we need for the sculpture. Although it took working late into the night, they managed to finish all preparations on time. While the Signal Group team can spend the next two days regaining their strength and fine-tuning their design, the Infantry Regiment team is still working flat out to fill the mold with the missing 2,000 tons of snow for their Upopoi sculpture. The clock keeps on ticking. Only about 17 days left until the festival. The moment of truth has arrived for the Signal Group team. Today, they will start construction of their palace. Work begins at 8 o'clock sharp. But first on the agenda, the morning PT. The military regards constructing the sculptures as a training exercise. The idea is to promote cohesiveness within the unit and prepare the soldiers for missions under extreme climatic conditions. Today is an important day. I'm highly motivated. We're finally getting started. Their first task? To remove the wooden boarding that they've been using to press the 3,000 tons of snow into shape. The team will now discover how good a job they did with the preparatory work. I'm checking whether there are any holes or cracks in the wall. This can easily occur. But fortunately, everything's looking good. 
Work on the sculpture can now finally begin. The first step involves the team cutting the snow block to create the rough shape. The second step consists of applying the ornamentation. They work from top to bottom. This ensures that falling chunks of snow don't damage parts they've already sculpted. During hardening, the snow has sunk by half a meter. In order that the dimensions of the palace are still correct, the cut lines have to be recalculated. The second important man on site, Chief Constructor Yoshinori Kobayashi. The first cut is critical. If we remove too much snow now, we'll have to add more again later. This takes time. And if we cut off too little, we'll have no space for the layer of clean snow, and that would be bad as well. This means it's essential that we stick precisely to the specified dimensions. The snow has now frozen so hard that it can only be worked on with a chainsaw. While the palace team is already starting work on its sculpture, the other military team is still behind schedule with their Upopoi sculpture. They want to get the last of the snow packed into the mold and finally finish the preparatory work today. Chief Constructor Hiroshi coordinates the work. We don't need any more snow here, just over there. Over here. Because the sculpture is three-dimensional, the snow has to be especially compact and mustn't, under any circumstances, have any cavities or inconsistencies. Or else, the protruding body of the owl, and the two towers in particular, will collapse under their own weight. By early afternoon, they're finally done. I'm now doing one last check to make sure everything is even and there's enough snow where we need it. Here too, the snow has to harden before they can continue. The signal group team is much further ahead. Chief Constructor Yoshinori is cutting out the rough shape of the Belvedere, a structure on what will be the roof of the palace. Just to be safe, the team had piled up an extra half meter of snow. The soldiers now have to take it away again, a back-breaking job in freezing conditions. I think it's fun regardless. When I come to the festival with my friends later, I can say, look, I helped build that. All of the soldiers participate voluntarily. They're still very motivated, but the extreme conditions and their grueling manual labor will gradually take their toll. One reason why the chief constructor wants to make up as much ground as possible at the beginning. My goal is to have the basic shape of the Belvedere finished by this evening. Over the course of the afternoon, they manually remove almost a ton of snow. The Belvedere slowly takes shape. A level below, Toshiaki Harada is already preparing the jobs for the following day in parallel. It's important that we find the middle. Otherwise, the whole sculpture will be off and will look strange. Toshiaki must be accurate to within two centimeters. This seems extreme considering the size of the sculpture. But human symmetry perception is so acute that observers find a lateral offset of just a few centimeters distracting. And visitors to Sapporo and the Japanese Defense Force expect the best. But Toshiaki has set himself an even tougher goal. He wants to find the middle to the nearest millimeter. This perfectionism is all pervasive in Japan. It takes an hour before he's satisfied. Okay. 
That was important. If the lines aren't totally accurate, the building will lean to one side, and it won't look right anymore. That's why the measuring work is so important. A long work day is coming to an end. We achieved our goal. Everyone worked very hard, and we actually got done quicker than planned. A good start for the Signal Group team. The Sapporo Snow Festival is the oldest of its kind in the world. It all began in 1949 when some students built six sculptures in the Adori Park for fun. The snow figures were so popular that sculptures were built the following year too. And in 1953, the city council decided to turn it into an international competition. From then on, the festival has grown to its current size, with the sculptures more numerous, larger, and more impressively conceived each year. There are now just 15 days to go until the festival opens. Besides the military, there are many private construction teams, supported by keen sponsors. The plots are much sought after. Thousands of applications are received each year, and only the best designs are selected. As such, the pressure to exhibit a perfect sculpture is high. The sculpture the infantry unit team is constructing is the largest at the festival. And they, of all teams, are the only ones who haven't yet begun with the sculpting work due to the sluggish snow deliveries. They want to start today, finally. Kochi Tsukara and his 15-man team are responsible for the right-hand tower. The trickiest part of the tower is the sloping roof. We don't have any reference points for where to cut, and we haven't done anything like this before. We just have a block of snow, and we have to guess where to cut while we're already working the snow. That doesn't exactly make it easy. In order to make up for lost time, they'll have to work flat out. Today's task? To start the cutting work on every area of the sculpture. The teams have to work in perfect concert, especially where the owl is concerned. There's just one meter separating the wings and the towers. First, Kochi and his men cut a one and a half by two meter block for their tower. They want to begin shaping the sloping roof in the afternoon. Each soldier has a specific task. Military rank doesn't count here, just experience. Chief Constructor Hiroshi is the most experienced member of the team. This is why he has overall responsibility for the project and the work of 150 soldiers. Everyone is under a great deal of pressure, both mentally and physically. I can't help wondering whether we'll manage to finish on time. The most urgent job on the site right now, finishing the delicate wingtips of the giant owl, guardian of the Ainu. Because right where the team is currently standing is where the spires are supposed to be. While the soldiers of the infantry unit are working flat out to make up for lost time, the signals are having their first problems. The quality of the building material leaves much to be desired. I'm very worried about the snow we got this year. Hokkaido is normally inundated with snow in winter. Pristine white powder snow, which is great to build with. But this year, the snow we've been given is not white. 
It's quite dirty, actually. In order to get enough at all, the team had to scrape together old snow from the previous year, and it's full of imperfections. However, they've already come up with a solution, but it involves a lot of extra work. They mix freshly fallen snow from the mountains with water. They then stick this, like plaster rendering, onto the finished surfaces, including in the remotest corner. It doesn't matter if the visitors can see it or not. Every centimeter of the sculpture must be perfect. Regardless of how much time it takes. The goal for the next two days, to finish construction of the Belvedere. This involves the team carving four statues, cutting out the three round windows, and applying nearly 300 decorative details all around. The team has set up its own carpentry workshop adjacent to the building site. This is where the molds for the ornamentation are made. We can't shape the small elements by hand. They'd never be uniform and would all look different. We obviously don't want that, which is why we make molds into which the snow is pressed. This ensures all the parts look identical. They have to construct 40 different molds in order to recreate all the details of the palace. Built by the Polish court architect in the 17th century, the palace originally belonged to a lord. Sometime later, the king of Poland had it converted into a private residence. The Lazienki Palace is still considered a masterpiece of classical architecture to this day. A different team is responsible for making the decorative elements. They have to mold 300 pieces each day, several thousand in total. The most important thing for their work, the quality of the snow. This wouldn't work with normal snow. We mix in some water so it can be molded better. They store the finished parts until they are needed on site. Normally, not a problem, thanks to the sub-zero temperatures but the weather is anything but normal. While the Signal Group team is already working on the details, things aren't going quite so well for the infantry unit. They are hoping to finish the wingtips of the owl by the afternoon and to make a start on the roofs of the towers. But where the majestic towers should be, there are just large blocks of snow. The wing team is having problems and thus preventing progress being made on the towers. Team leader Kochi is under pressure and trying desperately not to lose even more time. I'm using the battens to prepare the section of the tower where fresh snow needs to be reapplied so that the surface looks nice and white. I would normally carve the roof first and then do the facade, but I've had to change the plan. I need to wait until they're finished with the wings before we can do the roof. So, I'm making all the preparations for the next stage now. This way, we can get started first thing tomorrow morning, and hopefully with the roof as well. The team leader is annoyed. He and his team could have made much better progress by now. But their hands are tied. The day has been a total waste. Of course, I'm not at all happy with what we've achieved today. It wasn't down to my team, though. The guys have done a great job, but we didn't get as much done as we should have, unfortunately. We have to really pull out the stops tomorrow to get the roof finished. The workday finishes at 5 p.m. on the dot, but that will soon change, too. The next morning, just 14 days to go until the start of the festival. 
The problem facing the infantry unit team, carving the 3D elements, is far more complex than expected. Work on the intricate owl wings is still progressing rather slowly, and this is obstructing all the other work. By late morning, they're finally finished, and Kochi and his team can start on the roof of the tower. Their biggest challenge? Carving the sloping roof so that it's perfectly symmetrical. With a single cut, practically impossible. Team leader Kochi first determines the position of the upper and the lower edges of the roof. Then he draws a grid on the roof section to divide it into small units. With the help of these units, he cuts a stepped pattern into the block and cautiously works toward the desired slope from there. The method is time consuming, but extremely precise. It's tried and tested. The ancient Egyptians used it when constructing the pyramids in order to achieve the perfect sloping angle. At first, work progresses well, but just a few hours later, an unexpected problem arises. In Hokkaido, the land of snow and ice, the sun is shining, and it's getting dangerously warm. This year is already around 10 degrees warmer than normal for Sapporo in January. And today, the temperature actually climbs above freezing around midday. An absolute disaster when it comes to constructing snow sculptures. It's so warm that the snow is getting very soft. We have to work really carefully now. The problem, if the snow is too soft, it falls apart when worked on. This makes it nearly impossible to make an accurate cut, and there's worse to come. It's now snowing as well. The snow is falling onto the scaffolding and melting because it's so warm, and then dripping onto the sculpture. That's not good at all. The second military team, the Signal Group, is struggling with the weather too, just 13 and a half days before the festival starts. They're currently working on the ornamentation for the Belvedere, but the painstakingly crafted delicate elements melt especially quickly. The worst case scenario would be if we wouldn't be able to present the sculpture to the public in a perfect state. The festival opens, lots of people turn up, and the palace isn't completely finished. Or it just doesn't turn out quite as nice, simply because of the weather. We want visitors to be moved when they see the palace, and that will only happen if it's perfect. Waiting for the bad weather to pass is not an option. The project timeline is too tight. On the roof, the soldiers are starting to sculpt the statues. Their only aid, a photo of the original. It's really difficult, mainly because the statue has Western facial features. It would be much easier with a Japanese statue. But we made a small model beforehand to work out how best to go about it. We'll manage. Their lack of experience with European facial features is not the most pressing issue. The weather is deteriorating even further, and the soldier's job is increasingly becoming a tour de force. What's more, the new snow is covering up the elaborately sculpted details. It's crucial that we finish on time. 
If we work day and night, we'll definitely be finished on time. Despite the snowstorm, work continues to any extent possible. In the early hours of the evening, Chief Constructor Yoshinori calls it a day. He doesn't see any point in continuing. My goal for today was to finish off the Belvedere, but because it was so warm, we didn't make good progress. But we'll finish it tomorrow for sure. We simply have to finish. The team can only hope that the weather improves over the next few days. The team of the infantry unit, on the other hand, continues working despite the snowstorm. The sculpture is just so huge. We have to pull night shifts in order to finish on time. I'm introducing this measure now so we have a bit of a buffer at the end. There are just over 13 days to go until the festival opens. Chief Constructor Hiroshi is worried that more unforeseen weather could cause him even more problems and wants to get ahead of the curve by working night shifts now. A wise decision, as it turns out. The next few days feature an endless cycle of repetitive work. Apply snow and sculpt. Apply more new snow and sculpt. Every detail must be perfect. After all, around two million visitors and hundreds of television crews from around the world are expected over the course of the eight-day festival. The team spend over 10 hours each day cutting and sculpting the snow. Bit by bit, the details of the giant sculptures become recognizable. Each of the construction teams has just one goal to create the most beautiful sculpture at this year's festival. Around three days to go until the festival opens. The first of the tourists have already arrived. Throughout the city, preparations for the mega event are in full swing. And the first of the sculptures are already finished. The signal group still has a long way to go. The lead they once had has melted away like the snow. We got off to a great start. It was cold, and we did a fantastic job with the Belvedere, the upper viewing platform. But then last week, temperatures climbed to 4 degrees Celsius, and the sun was shining. Take the statues, for example. They were so beautiful, but now they've melted, and we have to redo their faces. Plus, the facade looks grey. That's not good. We have to revamp it. We were actually making good time, but because it's so warm, we have to redo everything. This means we have a lot of more work to do than anticipated. The artistically sculpted details melted into blobs of snow. The team hurriedly tries to repair what they can. They replace parts that have melted completely and repair that which can still be salvaged with fresh snow. But this means the workers aren't available for other tasks. And in around 53 hours' time, the palace is to be presented to their general at an internal ceremony. In the time that remains, the team still has to construct the 20-meter-wide staircase in front of the palace entrance, affix snow tiles to the side walls of the staircase, 
and the inscription on the frontage. Chief Constructor Yoshinori has had a construction template made specially for the stairs. I think it'll fit. Let's shove it in. Two people at the rear, please. Someone who can get out again later. OK, let's slide it in. Ready? Heave. Heave. OK, you at the back can get out. Lift up the left-hand corner a bit. OK, push. Does it fit? Right, OK. The template is in place. Now the actual construction work can begin. The goal, to finish the entire staircase by this evening. Lunch break start. Lunch break start. The soldiers don't normally have to be told twice to eat, but this time nobody reacts. They all have just one goal, one common objective, to somehow get the job finished before the festival opens. OK, that's enough for now. Let's take a break. Thanks, everyone. Good work. A lunch break, finally. While the soldiers eat and regain their strength, the mood at headquarters is bleak. In around 48 hours, they have to be finished, an almost impossible undertaking. The team has over two weeks of grueling physical labor behind them, without a day off. Although everyone is exhausted, they give it their all once again. The second military team, the infantry unit, have their own problems because the details of their Upopoi sculpture are not as delicate. It isn't quite as susceptible to the warm weather. But the positive temperatures have left their mark here, too. Because it was so warm, the snow has become soft everywhere. I was worried that something would get damaged, and it did. Now we have to redo the claw. But aside from the damaged foot, they're back on schedule again, and the pre-arranged night shifts have paid off. The team has managed to completely make up the lost time. If nothing else goes wrong now, they'll be able to finish their sculpture on time. A big if. In contrast to the Signal Group team, although it's already early evening, they're still nowhere near achieving their goal for the day, finishing the steps. Not one of the hundred soldiers thinks about calling it a day, though. The palace must be finished. Personal and professional pride are at stake. To the beam of a spotlight, they apply the inscription to the frontage. It spells out the name of the sculpture and that of their unit. We have to work especially carefully when applying the inscription, too. The visitors get very close at this point and can see every flaw, however small. 
So every single letter must be perfect. Just over a day and a half to go. Then work on the snow palace must be finished. It's now well into the night, but at least the temperature has dropped to minus three degrees Celsius. I think we need about another half hour. Then we should be finished with the stairs. We'll continue with the rest tomorrow. There's still a fair amount left to do elsewhere. But we can't do everything today. But yet again, things take longer than expected. It's shortly before midnight before they finally achieve their goal for the day. The staircase is finished. Time for a brief rest. Work will recommence early the next morning, giving 100% once again despite the short night. For the signal group, things aren't looking good. Fighting against the elements, rebuilding and repairing, they still have much to do. From now on, every minute counts. While the soldiers continue working, another company concurrently dismantles the scaffolding. The picture is completely different for the second military team, the infantry. They've already completed their sculpture, a remarkable turnaround considering their initial difficulties. Chief Constructor Hiroshi Nigara performs a final inspection. We've actually done it. We'll officially present the sculpture to the committee tomorrow and the festival opens the day after tomorrow. An amazing team effort. In just 15 days, with the temperature and materials working against them, 150 soldiers have transformed 5,000 tons of loose snow into this elaborate pop-up construction. The signal group team, however, are still far from finished. And at noon the next day, a ceremony is due to take place with high-ranking generals. To not present a finished sculpture by then would be an unimaginable humiliation for the team and their project leader, Daisuke. Around 21 hours to go. We actually wanted to finish work at five today, but we'll have to keep on working. The biggest problem is the sidewall. We have to finish the tiles and the border by tomorrow. We're giving it everything we've got. Although they've been working on the wall since the morning, they've only completed one row of tiles. And a lot of other details are unfinished too. They'll have to work late into the night yet again. The final day. The team has five hours left. We absolutely must be finished by noon today. Our bus is due to arrive then, and we have to present the sculpture to him. It's a very important moment for us. The soldiers assemble for the obligatory morning exercise for the last time. The army is the army, and rules are rules, no matter how tight time is. The biggest problem, despite pulling a night shift, half of the wall tiles are still missing. And the palace forecourt still needs to be made presentable too. The snow has become dirty and unsightly during the work. Everyone in the team has to dig deep to summon their last reserves of strength. One hour to go until the deadline. Chief Constructor Yoshinori completes his last important task. I'm making a hole for the lucky charm. It's to protect the building and ensure safety. 
、えー、祈って入れるお札の穴を掘ってます。It will be put into this box, and our general will place it here during the ceremony. There are few places where good luck pieces are as popular as in Japan. Ten minutes to go. The team frantically works on the final details. At least all of the tiles are now on the wall. That's it. Everyone pack up now, please. Time has run out, and the team has accomplished something no one considered possible just a short time ago. We've actually pulled it off. We finished on time. The biggest obstacle was the weather and having enough snow here in the first place. When I look at the palace now, It looks perfect and is a wonderful white. I'm very satisfied. Despite all the problems, the team has put in an impressive final effort and completed the palace on time. They present their sculpture to their general in a formal ceremony. I am very proud of what we've achieved. The palace turned out perfectly. People will come from around the world in order to see it. And hopefully, they'll be impressed. It's time for the team to celebrate their well deserved achievement. The only thing standing here four weeks ago was scaffolding. For 10 days, the dedicated soldiers filled up 3,000 tons of snow and pressed it into shape. They have spent two and a half weeks. Over 15,000 man hours, hard work and skill turning this enormous block of snow into a gigantic and elaborate pop up construction. A palace made of snow and ice. <laughs>